Happy Grandparents Day. I thank the Lord for all grandparents. I thank the Lord for my grandparents. All four of them were born in Mexico over 100 years ago. And when my grandparents came to the United States, all of them came around 1910. There was no Netflix. There was no Apple Plus. There was no iPhones, no internet, no computers. When my grandparents came to the United States, more or less in 1910, um, there were only uh, about 8,000 cars in the United States. Today, there's almost half a million cars. Paved streets were rare. As a matter of fact, when my grandparents came to the United States, in the whole country, there was only 150 uh, miles of paved road throughout the whole country. Today, there are more than 4 million miles of paved roads in the United States, and there were only silent movies. Things were different in 1910 here in the United States. 1910, the average life expectancy for men was only 47 years. Fuel for car, gasoline, was only sold in drugstores. Only 14% of homes had indoor plumbing. Only 8% of homes had a telephone. And the maximum speed limit in most cities was only 10 miles per hour. Some of you sisters would get a ticket just here in the church parking lot. <laughs> Bagging on old men and women all in one preaching. Wow. I, I, I need a raise. The average U.S. wage in 1910 was only 22 cents per hour. It's $450 per year. More than 95% of all births took place at home. Anybody here was born at home? All right, we got a couple people here that were born at home. Amen. Well, I want you to know at that time, 90% of all doctors had no college education whatsoever. Okay? Bread was seven cents a loaf. Eggs were 14 cents a dozen. A homemade cup of coffee was half a penny. Most women only washed their hair once a month, and they used borax or egg yolk for shampoo. The five leading causes of death in 1910 here in the United States were pneumonia, tuberculosis, stroke, heart disease, and diarrhea. The American flag only had 45 stars in 1910, and the population of Las Vegas, Nevada, was only 30 people. Today, over one million people live in the greater Las Vegas area. We didn't celebrate Mother's Day or Father's Day yet in 1910. One of every five adults in 1910 couldn't read or write. Only 6% of all Americans had graduated from high school. And marijuana, heroin, and morphine were all available over the counter at the local corner pharmacy. Things were different in my grandparents' day. I thank the Lord for my grandparents. One of the greatest examples of Christ's love in my life was my Grandma Tina. Let me tell you why. Because she loved me unconditionally. She corrected me in love all the time. And I, number three, I never felt like I had to perform for my grandma to love me. My grandma just loved me. And that is a Christ-like love. I also thank the Lord for my parents, my daughter's grandparents, because when my wife and I were being knuckleheads and going through hard times that we just created for ourselves, how many of you know most of the hard times, most of the hard times we go through, we create for ourselves? During those hard times in my household, my parents were the safe, stable rock that my daughters needed to remain sane. My parents weren't perfect parents, but they were perfect grandparents. And the experience, the patience, the maturity, the time, and finances, they didn't, they didn't have for me and my sister. They always had for our daughters, and they truly lavished and blessed our daughters. So grandparents, whatever you weren't for your children, you have another opportunity with your grandchildren. So with God's help, Grandma, Grandpa, be the best Grandma, Grandpa you can be. Love your grandchildren unconditionally. Correct them in love. Accept them for who they are and show them God's love, show them God's patience, and show them God's heart. Life was different when my grandparents came to the United States. 
just like things were different when the Old Testament came to us versus when the New Testament came to us. In the Old Testament, most of the time, God dealt with people as a whole, the whole nation, the whole tribe, the whole clan. The whole family was blessed for being godly and obedient or punished for being disobedient and sinful. And to this day, obedience and blessing still go hand in hand. God dealt with people as a whole in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, however, today, God deals with people individually. I want you to know that one day we will all stand before God alone. The entrance into heaven will not be based upon who was the God or the gods, what was the religion, where was the church of your family, but the entrance into heaven will be based on this. Who is your God? And what did you do with the free gift of eternal life that God offers us through his son, Jesus Christ? In other words, mom and dad can be praying for you. Grandma and grandpa can be praying for you. I believe that I'm here today as a pastor because I had a praying grandma. And even though she's in heaven, her prayers are still moving and working in the lives of her grandchildren. And even though I'm covered in my grandparents' prayers and my parents' prayers, one day I and you will all stand before God alone. Jesus put it this way. I am the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. No one comes to the Father, not through your family, not through your church, not through the religion. I had a friend, the Italian, you... You know, what's your religion? He straight out said, I'm Italian, so that means I'm Catholic. That's what he said. He believed that with all his heart. I want you to know that at the foot of the cross, there's no religions, and there's no ethnicities, not even any families, just you and God. Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Not through a family, not even through your church, but only through Jesus Christ. Two examples of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Genesis 32, 9. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father, and in some versions it says, the, father, the God of my grandpa, Abraham. God of my father, Isaac. Lord, you said to me, go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. Jacob prayed to the God of his grandfather, Abraham, and his father, Isaac. I want you to know that... The Bible says in James 2.19 that people say, I believe in God, and James' answer to that is, so what? Even the demons believe that there is a God. That's what James 2.19 says, okay? Well, you know, Pastor Al and I, back in the day, when we were lowriders, in the 1970s, we used to go hitting the streets of San Fernando and Pacoima. We used to pass out what was called then tracks, and we would witness to people. We were out there, and a few times we had bullets whistle right through. That's why I don't have any more hair. Just all the bullets just took it all off. <laughs> Pastor Al put glue on his wig, and he still has a nice full head of hair. But we would get this all the time. Oh, my parents are Christians. Oh, my grandparents are Christians. You know? And you know what? We praise God for those of you that are watching that all that your family has done for God and they're going to be richly blessed one day when we get to heaven. Okay? But what are you doing for God? And where do you stand with God today? Can I preach to you? Because we praise God for grandparents' prayers. We praise God for parents' prayers. But one day they're going to be in heaven. Who's going to be praying for you? Can you personally go to God and say, Father, hear my prayer? 2 Timothy 1.5, difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Paul tells young Timothy, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois 
and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded, now lives in you also. See, Paul was persuaded that Timothy had a personal relationship with God. And he had a personal faith in God. Why? Because it was evident. Everybody say evident. And he learned this faith from his grandmother Lois. Grandparents, what kind of inheritance are you leaving for your grandchildren? I praise God, honestly. My wife and I have been able to get a little ahead in life because grandparents on both sides left something for their children. And then they left something for us. I praise God for that. You know, when I see someone, a Mexican man, selling fruit, or selling flowers, or, or standing at Home Depot, I say, thank you, Jesus, because that could have been me. But my grandparents came over 100 years ago, so today, my wife and I and my daughters have gotten ahead in life because my grandparents left a material inheritance. But more than that, we are here today. Our sins are forgiven. Our marriage is still together. We are on our way to heaven because my grandparents left a spiritual inheritance for my parents, and they passed it on. But, but Pastor, you, you just said, you just said that we're going to stand before God alone. Our family's not going to be there. No, but while we're here on earth, my parents and my grandparents left an example for us to follow. Grandma, Grandpa, what kind of example are you leaving Mom, dad, what kind of example are you leaving? Grandparents, what, in spirit, what spiritual inheritance are you leaving? Can I preach to you this morning? Can I preach to you this morning? I learned how to serve God by watching my grandparents. Grandparents, are your grandchildren learning how to serve God by watching you? And friends, Timothy says, I'm persuaded you have a personal relationship. Friends, is God persuaded that you have a personal relationship? When Pastor and I would go hit the streets and we'd witness to people, some people, this was also their thing. Oh, you know what? Don't worry about it. Me and God, does God know that you guys are, does God know about this special arrangement? I don't necessarily serve God, and I, I kind of do my own thing, but does God know about that arrangement? Paul says, Timothy, I, I know, boy, you're right with God because it's evident. Is it evident to others, including your grandchildren, that you are in a relationship with God because you have personally encountered and embraced eternal life through Jesus Christ? And I know some of you grandparents, well, some of the grandchildren, Pastor Israel, are like, man, you want them to come back? Stop preaching to them so hard. <laughs> you know, the relationship between grandpa and grandchild, grandma and grandchild, is one of the most beautiful that a person can experience. I thought more grandparents would say amen. Got some babysitters, free babysitting going on in the house right now, huh? Let me say it again. The relationship between grandpa and grandchild, grandma and grandchild, is one of the most beautiful that a person can experience. <laughs> However, understand that God has no grandchildren. Scripture does not declare grandparent, grandchild as one of our opportunities to relate with God. Rather, Scripture affirms this, John 1, 12, yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, as Lord and Savior, to those who believed in his name, the name of Jesus, he gave the right to become what? Children, Children of God. Children born, not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or even a husband's will, but born of God. Paul says this in Romans eight sixteen: the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Because how many of you, like your pastor, sometimes... You don't feel like you're a child of God. You don't feel forgiven. Yeah. Only me and the worship leader. Okay. Hey, good for you, man. But sometimes I don't always feel like a child of God. I always think I'm a child of God. 
That's when the Holy Spirit comes and he testifies with my spirit. Goes beyond my thinking, my feeling, my, my shame, my guilt, and makes connection with my spirit and reminds me, you are a child of God because of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. John 1, 3. 1 John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called what? How many of you have ever been called worse? You know what God calls you? My child. Whatever, whoever, whatever they call you, you've accepted Jesus into your heart. God calls you my child. And this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. But what we will be when we get to heaven has not yet been made known. We don't know how it's going to all work, but we know this, that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everybody say with me, when Christ appears. Friends, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon, church. For those of you that are watching, Jesus is coming soon. I hope that you're ready. And I hope that you're getting your family ready for Christ's return. And all we do and all we say, grandma, grandpa, dad, mom, friends, pointing towards heaven and not towards hell. When that day arrives that Jesus returns, we won't call God grandpa. On that day, we'll call him father. However, today, everyone in here, everyone watching, you today can call God Savior. You can call him Lord. You're sick in body, you can call him my healer. You have a need in your life, you can call him your provider. If you're in trouble, you can call him your protector. And most of all, you can call him dad. Because although God has no grandchildren, through what Jesus did on the cross, you today can become a child of God.